It's lovely to be here today with Victoria Luck, the Managing Director of Bazool. How are you? I'm very well, a bit cold, absolutely freezing out there and feeling a bit January blues, but I'm sure this interview will cheer me up no end. <laughs> hopefully, hopefully. So how was your Christmas break? It was very nice. I was working through most of it, but, uh, but yes, I ate a lot, drank a lot. Now I'm on detox. Sounds like, you know, what you need to do over this period, though, and it is back with a bang this week. This is our first week in review video coming back. Um, so let's have a little chat about, you know, what do you think is coming up in 2017? Well, I guess, I mean, if we look at 2016, it was quite a turbulent year for the advertising industry. So I imagine we're going to see a lot of change in 2017. I think there's going to be a massive insurgence um, in terms of AI and uh, artificial intelligence, of course, and probably, hopefully, from brands' perspective, being able to converge that with creativity to ensure we're offering the best solutions that are not just data-led, but also have that personal um, touch as well. I can see the likes of out of home, digital out of home, also coming to maturity, uh, with brands being able to more easily purchase, obviously, programmatic out of home advertising. From my perspective, obviously, the growth of influencer marketing to really skyrocket this year with a lot more um, influencer marketing platforms coming to the fore, obviously like Bazool, I think there'll be a scramble to, to who's the best, who can provide the best possible solutions for brands and also taking influencer marketing into the media space and slightly maybe away from the PR space with uh, advertising agencies being able to purchase influencer activity as easy as they could with the likes of uh, digital display in the past for instance. I also think we'll see obviously dynamic creative come to the fore more. Also personalized ads, there's companies like um, Million Ads, I believe, who can do personalized radio activities. So I think a lot's gonna happen in 2017. It's gonna be very exciting to see how this changes. CES is happening at the moment, which I'm incredibly gutted that I'm not at. Um, are you a Vegas fan? Uh, I am a Vegas fan. I've only been once and I've always wanted to go to this event, but obviously it's very close after New Year. Let's get our bids in for next year. That's what I'm, I'm, I'm working towards next year already. Obviously everyone's talking about voice activation. You mentioned it. Do you think that that's going to be a big trend? I think it will be and I think it already is becoming a trend with the likes of in, in home with Amazon Echo, I believe, that you can turn on your heating, you can even get the timetable for trends. Um, what I wonder is how that's going to become something that you use out of home and how comfortable people are with speaking into their phone out of home. I know in China it is, you know, people are always talking into their phones. I work for an Italian company, they're always talking into their phones. But I do believe it's going to take time for people to find, you know, really start using that and feeling comfortable with that voice activation. I guess for brands there's so many different opportunities and obviously more targeted ads. I guess what I, from a personal point of view, what I would find useful is if I'm driving a car, I can order my Starbucks um, and it arrives on time. I guess from a brand's perspective as well, that's good for the car brand, that's good for Starbucks, and as a consumer, there's a value there as well because my Starbucks will be waiting for me. Talking about audio, there are the rumors that Google's gonna make a bid for SoundCloud. Do you think that'll be a good move for them? Well, actually, originally, I was um, very much more clued up on the fact that Spotify was making a bid for SoundCloud, and I saw that as quite complimentary, because I know I think SoundCloud's a bit more edgy, with more edgy producers um, than potentially that of Spotify. But to hear Google, I mean, Google are bidding for everything at the moment, and also they do have their, I believe it's called Google music play business as well so whether they will use soundcloud as a complementary use in integrating the features into google music play or whether they will um, simply like they did with youtube integrate some of their features i also know i think there's 175 million unique users using soundcloud so therefore huge data potential for them also Finally, I don't know if you've seen that one of the other online media and marketing publications had an interview with Jonathan Mildenhall yes. in which he said that he's appointing a chief media officer. You know, this is kind of a new role for them. Do you, do you think that it's a necessary role? So I believe he's the um, CMO of Airbnb. Yes. And I guess last year, again, there was quite a lot spoken about this. And I think actually even in the Festival Media in Rome, um, it was a discussion with these new titles, these new CMO type titles coming to the fore. I think there probably isn't, is a need because the media landscape is changing so quickly. Is that expertise something that marketeers have, advertisers have? And I think brands need to take a little bit more control in-house. For instance, I know Perno Ricard are taking more control over their programmatic business. And this isn't to say that the advertising agencies are doing anything wrong, but I believe that, that you know, adding that level of expertise within the brands, marketers themselves, can only just help push advertising forward.
Fabulous. Well, it was lovely to have a chat with you, Victoria, and I hope 2017 is awesome for you. Thank you. Thank you for having me.